Caregiver, You Are Not Alone by Bobby Carducci, published by SNH Publishing. After dad died, I thought it was normal for mom to be a little flaky, to forget to pay a bill or stay in her pajamas all day. She had lost the love of her life and nothing would ever be the same. I understood her grief. I wallowed in my own pain at losing dad. It was especially hard in the quiet moments when I longed to hear his laugh or his booming voice as he sang off key with his favorite music on the car radio. Seeing her so broken scared me. Mom was always so strong. She's the one who gathered me in her arms and got me to the hospital when I fell out of Mr. Hogan's oak tree when I was 10. Dad took one look at me, turned green and fainted. Mr. Hogan ended up caring for him while mom took off with me. We never told him we laughed about it on the way to the hospital. She would find a way to get through this. It would take time, but she would be herself again. Weeks later, when she stopped answering the phone, I knew something was very wrong. Since the day I got married, we started each day with a brief chat in the words, I love you. You never know when a day will bring, and starting it off with love will get you through the rough patches when they come, she said. She was right. Her love got me through a lot of bad days at work and rough patches with teenage know-it-alls. I had to be there for her now, and she wasn't letting me. Determined to help her, I drove to her house, shocked to find the curtains drawn and the doors locked. Mom always loved the sun, streaming in the windows each morning after she fed the birds who tapped on the sliding glass doors looking for breakfast. What I found when I finally convinced her to let me in was shocking. Clearly, she hadn't bathed for several days. There were dirty dishes on the table and in the sink. The smell of sour milk was so strong I almost gagged. Mom, what's wrong? Are you sick? Why didn't you call me or pick up the phone when I called you? Not sick. Waiting. I can't do anything until he gets here. Until who gets here? Your father. He's late. I keep waiting and he doesn't come. Sometimes I hear his car in the driveway, but he doesn't come in. Why doesn't he come in? Oh, Mom, Dad can't come in. He died. Don't you remember the funeral? No, he's not dead. I hear his car in the driveway. Maybe today he'll come in. That's when I knew this was more than grief, and I needed to find out what was happening to her. Alzheimer's, her doctor said. I've been seeing her for over a year. It probably started a few years before that. Oh my God, she never told me. Dad never said a word. She didn't want anyone to know. At first she was embarrassed and now she doesn't know she has it. She's going to need a lot of support. Why didn't I notice anything before now? Your father helped her hide it. He didn't like it, but if that's what she wanted, he'd figure he'd go along with her as long as he could. Losing him has brought on a huge change, and you have some very important decisions to make about her long-term care. I'll admit her to the hospital for a few days. She's dehydrated and running a low-grade fever. She may have a urinary tract infection. UTIs often cause changes like this in someone with Alzheimer's. You take the time to talk to your husband and decide where she goes from there. I already know the answer to that. She's coming to live with us. Jim and I have talked about having one or more of our parents come live with us when the day came they needed help. We have the room and we want to do it. Okay, if that's what you want for now, but if it gets to be too much for you, talk to me and I'll give you information on some excellent memory care places. Thank you, but I don't think I'll be needing it. Just remember, it's here when you want it. Mom will be here in a few minutes. Jim called from the hospital to let me know when they will arrive. Are we ready for this, any of us? Her rooms are ready and I have plenty of her favorite food on hand. Everyone I know has someone in their family with it. Alzheimer's or dementia of some kind. Now it's got her. I'll be there for her through it all. But if it got her now, it may be coming for me or Jim later, and I'm scared. I hear the car pulling into the driveway. It begins. The imperfect caregiver says, when we hold our infants in our arms, we are filled with awe and hope for the future. We envision a life of promises fulfilled. We never picture them feeding us, 
holding our hand to keep us from falling or changing our underthings. I don't even like to type the word diapers. The thought of losing one's dignity to such a degree is truly fearsome. In my mind, I hear the words, it's enough to scare the pants off me. The irony makes me shudder and chuckle at the same time. The caregiver and the cared for locked in a fearsome intimacy. I don't know where the quote came from. If I did, I would give credit here. What I do know is those five simple words speak a devastating truth. Caregiver, you are not alone. Copyright 2018 by Bobby Carducci. To order a copy, go to snhbooks.com. To order a personalized signed copy, send an email to info at bobbycarducci.com. www.bobbycarducci.com.